First place Union out for warmups, looking to stay unbeaten at home and eyeing five consecutive wins. Tonight, it's a matchup against an opponent it hasn't faced since 2019. Union Pre-Kick Live starts now. On the banks of the Delaware and Chester, it's kids' night here on the Subaru Plaza as the Steamrolling Union are closing in on the tail end of the regular season schedule, looking to stay at the top of the standings. From Subaru Park in Chester, tonight it's the lone meeting of the regular season between the Union and Houston Dynamo FC. On the plaza here, welcome to Union Pre-Kick Live with former Union defender Shane and Williams. I'm Dave Leno. Look at this awesome crowd here behind us enjoying the festivities before this one kicks off against Houston. Shane and the Union are steamrolling right now. As mentioned, they have won four consecutive games, unbeaten in five, undefeated at home. How do they continue their dominant play at Subaru Park tonight? They're cruising and they're doing it on a ton of different ways. They're scoring goals, they're defending well. Look for that to continue today. Uh, good game for them here against a good opponent in Houston. Hard to believe we only have a meager 12 games left of the regular season. The Union find themselves at the top of the Eastern Conference. Look at these crazy stats here. 15 goals conceded through 22. Jim Kern has made it publicly known that the record is 27 goals allowed in the season by Sporting Kansas City in 2012. Can the Union surpass that record? How about the season from Kai Wagner this year? Tied first in assists with Carlos Hill with 11. And Gazdag all, by the way, with 10 goals. Double-digit Danny is our Danny Higginbottom called him. They're having a great run of, the, of, of form this year. 15 goals conceded through 22 matches. They're right on pace to, to break that record that Sporting Kansas City has, and it's definitely in their sights, and they're looking forward to breaking it, hopefully. As a former defender, how impressed have you been by not just Andre Blake with his nine shutouts, but for the back line this year? I know that they recently get a 7-0 win against DC, coming off of a road win at Orlando, but, but the quality of play from the back all the way to the strikers has been impressive. Yeah, like I said, they're doing it in a multiple different types of ways they're scoring goals they're defending on the other side of things Andre saving PKs so all things are clicking for them and look for them to keep rolling tonight and you can see the play of Daniel Gaz that go to the Union been searching a productivity from another a number 10 and they're getting that form what do you make of his connection up top with Ua Karanzer when Burke comes in those front three have been spectacular this year Gazdag's done a really good job of combining with whoever's up front. Uh, the front two and him behind has done, been a really good combination for them moving forward. As you said, he's got 10 goals, a bunch of assists to throw in there as well. Exactly what you need from your number 10. How about the play of Julian Carranza? Comes into this game goalless in the last three, but that's not indicative of what he's provided up top. How is he paired with Ua and somebody else up top for the Union this year? Obviously, the Union purchasing his contract from Inter Miami, no longer a lone player. He's now owned by the Union. Huge move for the Union. They definitely wanted to make sure that this was a permanent deal for Julian. He's done a great job of being that spark plug and being that consistent forward throughout all the partnerships that they've had up top. He's definitely been the one to, to carry the load uh, moving through the season. And often, Shane, and I remark at just the work rate of Julian Carranza, just the amount of running, not just in the box and in around the area in his hold-up play, but also defensively. What those strikers provide, not just with their pressing cues, to help out and aid those players, especially on the wings of the diamond, has been great to watch this year. It's a big part of why the Union have only given up 15 goals. They get a huge workload from their forwards, pressing, winning balls higher up the field, and it really helps them to then control the game and to get into the attack. One of the reasons why that the Union are in first place this year is their dominant play here at Subaru Park, where they're the only MLS team that are unbeaten at home. Look at that record, 6-0-5, looking for their seventh home win this year. Only six goals allowed in 11 matches, coming off multiple shutouts over the last five games. And Julian Carranza had that seven goals this year, but five of them here in Chester. Yeah, he's done a great job at home. He definitely feeds off the crowd's energy. As you can see behind us, they're, they're starting to get live in here, and it's really going to help the, the atmosphere tonight and hopefully help him to score some more goals. I mean, ever since the Supporter Shield year in 2020, you back that up with the impressive performances of 2021. How important is it? Because you, you know how tough it is to win on the road this year, and the Union have been faring much better on the road even last year and including this year. But, but to get all those points here at Subaru Park, I know there's been a multitude of draws this season, but to take care of business, that's also important for the club. They've done such a great job of, even though not playing their best football all the time, of getting results. Even though they might be a tie, those results will definitely help them push further into the season and, and hopefully get them a good playoff spot. 
Here's union head coach Jim Kern on the importance of taking care of business at Subaru Park and the help by the fans this year in Chester. Yeah, look, the last several years we've been a hard team to play against at home. Um, you know, I think a lot of credit has to go to our fans. Uh, we continue to be relentless at home. Uh, we don't want to be beat. Uh, we want to keep that streak uh, going, uh, but we know it's not easy. Uh, and, and we have to be at our max every time we step on the field. Uh, and this weekend will be no different. There was a terrific nugget compiled by our crew. If you missed it, only three home losses over the last three years, from when you played for the Union as a defender to this point, just how stealthy has this back line for the Union been over the years? It's really set the precedence for them on, on having good seasons and, and being strong at home. They've really turned this place into a fortress. Like you said, three three losses in, in an, uh, several years, that's, that's something that's unprecedented in the league, and that's something that you can really build on, and you've seen them build on their defense and, and how much they've improved on all facets of the game. They've done a great job here at home. These fans have done a great job helping them to, to reach these, these heights, and they're going to continue to do so. And the coaching staff often tells everybody that they don't want to peak in March, April, May. Now's the time in that push to the playoffs where you want to see this team deliver, not just in the back, but you're also seeing it with the multitude of goals, 12 over the recent stretch for the Philadelphia Union. And speaking of the Union, let's get to Jim Curtin starting 11 tonight against this Houston team. Andre Blake with his nine shutouts coming off the 1-0 win over Orlando. Baizu is going to make his second consecutive start for Harrell as the right back. Wagner, as mentioned, with his 11 assists. Glezis and Elliott have been spectacular out of the back. Jose Martinez is suspended due to yellow card accumulation. He's out for the third time this year, so Flock comes in at the base of the diamond. Bedoya is back off of yellow card suspension on the right. McGlynn makes his third start out on the left. Gazdak at the number 10 with his 10 goals. Carranza has mentioned Shane in his goal list in his last three, paired with Ua, who's going to make the start. He came off the bench last game. Yeah, really look for the Union front three to look to combine and, and to cause the Houston Dynamo uh, defense a lot of problems. They've been really good in the last four games, scoring a bunch of goals in a, in a different, different facets of ways, so look for that to continue today. And I think something that's very important to note is the play of Olivier Baizo over the last two games. I think that, you know, between he and Harriel, it's a good problem to have right now because Baizo's getting really high up that right-hand side. I think a key is to watch for the partnership between he and Bedoya to really flourish tonight, especially on that Lundquist side of Houston. Also an important nugget to keep in mind throughout this game is the Union have scored three set-piece goals over the last three games. So I think that's also a focal point when it comes to set pieces against Houston. As for this Houston team, led by Nagabura's team, coming off a 2-1 loss to Minnesota, they're 1-3-1 over the last five. Clark, the former Timbers goalie, starts in goal. Lundqvist will look to get high up the left. Steris comes in as a center back, pair with former Red Bulls defender Parker. Zeko's going to make the start for Griffin Story as a right back. Karaskia is very good, very dominant on set pieces. Look for him to drift inside. Vera, also a quality player. Hector Herrera uh, played in the last two World Cups for Mexico, over 100 caps for the Mexican national team. They wanted him to make the big signing to get Herrera, certainly a focal point for the Union. Sebastian Ferreira comes in at the number nine, paired up top of this 4-3-3 for Darwin Quintero, who's on the bench. Fafa Pico makes his return to Subaru Park, played for the Union 2017 to 2019, 89 appearances for the Union. Olferson also sits a little bit deeper, but when you take a look at this 4-3-3 formation, what are you expecting in Houston's buildup, and how did the Union backline combat that tonight? A team that has a lot of MLS experience, a lot of international experience as well, adding Herrera. They're looking to really boost their, their playoff chances with a win here today and really get their season started. They've been a little up and down. Uh, Going to look to come in here and really put a lot of pressure on the Union to, to, to force turnovers and to try to get balls higher up the field and look to counterattack. Yeah, they, they actually had a good start this year with four wins at a stretch of seven, but then they lost nine of 13 games from about April to July. So this Houston team's been struggling and trying to come up with a road win tonight against the Union. That won't be easy, but here at Subaru Park, like I said, it's kids' night. Fans are fired up here on Subaru Plaza. And on the other side, we go through Shane and Eye on the Pitch when we return in just a moment. Everybody's coming into Subaru Park for this matchup about 26 minutes away before the Union will take on Houston. A little face painting here at Subaru Plaza. Tons of great activities for the 18th regular season meeting between the Union and Houston Dynamo FC. 
Welcome back to the Plaza. Jason from the Union Shop with former Union defender Shady Williams. I'm Dave Leto. Just behind me, want to give a shout out to PSC Madrid at the 2013s here from Northeast Philly. And everybody hanging out with us here at the Plaza. Thanks so much for chilling with us, everybody. And welcome back to Union Pre Kick Live. It's now time for Eye on the Pitch. Two keys for victory for Shane. And tonight, you're going to begin with the Union to continue their goal scoring form tonight. 12 goals in the last four games. It's been a huge part of why they've been so good uh, over this last couple games. Look for that to continue. Look for the front three to look to combine and get good chances on goal. Your second point is to continue to play really well at home. How did they get that done tonight? It gets a Houston team that's starving for points. They're below the playoff line in the Western Conference. It starts with this energy behind us. This home crowd is going to be a huge factor in this game, and I expect them to, to come in and be, be ruckus and look to, look to really lift the team. All right, so they set the tone in the stands here in the Subaru Plaza. Let's get to some of the players warming up just inside here at Subaru Park for our impact players. We begin with Captain Alejandro Bedoya returning from yellow card suspension. How important is it to have the leadership back of Bedoya tonight? And this Houston team hasn't made the playoffs since 2017, so they got plenty of time left before the tail end of the regular season of the Western Conference. That starts today against the Union, but of course the Union here are dominant, unbeaten at Subaru Park. And with more on this matchup, we send it upstairs to the men calling tonight's match, the Hall of Famer, J.P. Della Camera and Danny Higginbottom. Thank you, David. It's an unfamiliar foe in the Houston Dynamo, Danny. They haven't played each other since 2019, but what did the Union have to do tonight to keep their winning streak alive? I think it's all about the start of the game because you're playing against a Houston team that's a little bit low on confidence, but they do have individual quality. So, Thank you so much, gentlemen. Kids are having fun here at the Subaru Plaza. About 20 minutes away, they'll kick off between the Union and the Dynamo. Coming up, we'll hear from Chip Curtin and Ernst Tanner on the state of the team next. I think after the show, Shannon, you and I are going to join this gentleman here for some cornhole here on Kids Night on the Subaru Plaza. The Union are going to kick off against the Houston Dynamo in about 11 minutes time. Welcome back to the Plaza with Shannon Williams. I'm Dave Leto. It's now time for Watching You, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Two players we're keeping an eye out tonight. I'll begin with the captain, Alejandro Bedoya, up top, looking for him to attack that right-hand side, as mentioned, with Baizo and also Ua and Carranza to aid into the attack. But I'm going to call for it here. I'm going to call a Bedoya flick off of a set piece. I think it's whether he scores or it's going to lead to a union goal again, which will be their fourth consecutive game scoring on a set piece. I'd love to see it happen. Thanks to Bedoya. Who are you rolling with? I'm rolling with Daniel Gazdag. He's been such an important uh, union player this year. He's had his probably his best union season, and I look for that to continue tonight. Ten goals, eight assists. He's the guy. Finally, what do you want to see out of the first 15, 20 minutes for this union team tonight? Two goals. <laughs> Easy as could be, right? Let's start the game flying. Let's get this crowd into it, and let's, let's have some fun tonight. Well, they're in first place, just a point above New York City. As New York City plays Montreal, we'll be keeping tabs of that matchup as the union right now are trying to stay at the top of the East with a great result tonight over Houston. Thanks so much to our entire crew and the fans joining us here at the Subaru Plaza. Excellent job, everybody, and thanks so much for hanging out for us tonight. For our producer, Jordan Strauss, our director, John Conlin, Shannon Williams, and our entire fantastic crew, I'm Dave Leno. Shannon and I will see you at halftime and postgame on PHL 17. JP and Danny have the first half call with the play-by-play. -play. Union taking on Houston next. <laughs>